Hey guys. Well, today I'm going to be working on the uh, front axle. As you can see, I already got a little bit of it modified. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll show you guys what I did. Uh, I still got a little bit of work to do on it. Um, I notched the top and the bottom out as well as the side out for the e-locker. Um, I picked up a OE Toyota gasket for the e-locker, put it on and uh, traced it out where I needed to uh, notch more uh, as well as build up areas. That was a weird sound. <laughs> Anyways, I got a couple of holes to drill and tap. Um, I got to get some studs. And then uh, I got to build this area up a little bit more. Um, I used a straight edge on it and uh, you can see a little bit of a gap. So, and I don't like that right there. Need to build that up a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it's, it's coming together. Um, plan for today is to get the axle all built minus third member and axle shafts because I don't have those yet. I got to go down to Nelson and uh, visit my buddy Kyle. Um, I did order a new tie rod because I had uh, used that as the drag link on the Forerunner with the full size axles. Um, it's the only thing that I had that would work, so I, I made it work. Um, that guy's expensive. <laughs> But uh, anyways, I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to finish building it up and cleaning it up and then uh, I also, I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember those holes and stuff from the angle grinder that I got a little bit too deep on, I filled those in. Um, I also filled these two notch marks in, I can't remember, yeah there's another little one there, a little bit there, but I'm not worried about that one. Um, deep stuff, I'm welding and uh, smoothing out. And then uh, a little bit of work on the face there. Uh, I may or may not fill that hole and that hole. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just uh, get right to it, I guess. Redneck uh, tie down, I guess. Not going anywhere. <laughs> Using the hydraulic, uh, or the, the air ram to push down on the axle. And then I got it on the, uh, the flat part on the edge of the table, so. It's not going anywhere. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, fire up ye old welder and start uh, building it back up. And then uh, grind it down, remark those two holes. Once I'm happy with the level, the levelness of it, then, uh, then I'll drill and tap all the holes. But uh, yeah, just get right to it. Got the front dip ball ground down, cleaned up. Bunch there, there, the uh, the base there. I even did that, built that back up because you guys will remember they had a little notch in there. Cleaned up that area there, that one there, a little bit down there, some down there. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, now that I've got the uh, the housing pretty much done. Still got a little bit to do on it, but uh, I want to get the knuckles put on it. So I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> Dramatically increasing the weight. got the one side set up it has been like seven years I think since I built one of these so I started filming and then I was like what the heck I can't remember how this goes together so I turned the camera off 
I uh, went to town on it, I figured it out, I got the shim set, um, everything's tightened down on this side. I did not forget the wipers and seals and stuff, I almost did, but I didn't. And uh, the axle, or the, the knuckle, it moves nice, it's not too tight, it's definitely not loose. Um, so now I've got to work on the other side and I will show you guys what I did and how to do it. Um, first things first, I'm going to pack the bearings of grease because that is the dirtiest part of it and then uh, after that it's all clean work provided your stuff is clean <laughs> but uh, yeah no, it turned out pretty good I'll lift her up off the jack it's definitely definitely uh, feeling pretty good so I'll uh, reposition the axle on the jack stands I don't have a third member in there which kind of sucks because you can use the the um, pinion flange, I guess, on the third member to support it in uh, uh, two, two axes. Um, luckily, I do have the bottom truss there, so that can help with uh, part of it being flat. So, uh, Anyways, um, that flopping around might prove to be rather uh, interesting, but I'll get this up onto the jack stands. I'll pack the bearings of grease, and then I'll uh, show you guys how to assemble a uh, steering knuckle onto the steering ball, or the knuckle ball. Got it up on the jack stands. That, uh, the knuckle flopping around was definitely an issue. Um, so I put a jack underneath the rotor to uh, support it a little bit. It's kinda, kinda locked out now, so that's, that's okay. Before uh, the, the knuckle slid that way and the thing almost fell off the jack stands, so. Good now. <laughs> Anyways, I'll pack the bearings and then uh, we'll go to town on getting that guy installed. All right, guys, assembly time. I got my bearings packed. I got the uh, caliper off because it's just easier without it trying to kick off to the side all the time. Um, this bottom piece, I got it all cleaned up. I had uh, overspray on it, and that will fight you. Trust me, it'll fight you. Um, first step: once you figure out what shims you need, every axle is different. Um, so the shims you guys are going to use is going to be way different than the shims that I use or it might be the same, you never know. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm going to install this in the bottom, make sure it is the bottom because uh, this, this is one way only. Um, if you put it on upside down it will be kicked way off so um, I'm going to put the shims on here, install it into the bottom and then drive the bearing onto it from the top side. It's a lot easier than how I set the first one up. <laughs> I had the axle upside down, I had the jack supporting the knuckle, and uh, I had the axle balancing on the tire, and I used that block of wood and that hammer to drive this into the bearing. So um, this way is going to be a lot easier. A lot easier. Alright, so shims go on here. It doesn't matter which orientation they go. I've got one thick shim, one uh, skinny shim. It really doesn't matter. Um, slide that guy on there, use your hardware. I installed brand new studs, um, they're just so nice. The reason why I installed brand new studs is because I lost the old ones. And they were probably, uh, probably stressed out anyways, so. And uh, one more thing, it's probably not conducive to uh, longevity building this thing on the floor. I already got one there. <laughs> so if you guys can build it on something cleaner, um, I'm just, I can't lift this thing on my toolbox and lift it off. So I'm uh, building it on the floor where I don't have to lift it. <laughs> Get these guys snugged up. Doesn't have to be super, super tight because we will be uh, loosening these off again. But uh, get it like that. Grab your bearing. Set it on top like that. Make sure you got a rag handy so you can wipe off all the, the grease. Uh, 21 mil socket fits on top of the uh, the bearing perfect and doesn't interfere with the uh, 
the outer skirt at all. There. It's just that easy. Um, this is a thousand times easier than the way I did it before. So now we're going to loosen these back off. You don't have to pull this off because now um, the bearing is going to prevent the, uh, the bottom part from coming out. I don't know if I'm remembering incorrectly, but I seem to remember being able to pull this whole assembly out through the bottom, but I could be mistaken. More than likely I'm mistaken. So we'll uh, pull this piece down until the bearing sits flush on the bottom there, and then uh, we're ready to put the knuckle onto the knuckle ball. Okay, I totally lied to you guys. We're not ready to put it onto the knuckle ball yet. We gotta put our uh, wipers and seals on. Don't want to uh, forget that, because then you gotta pull everything back off. Uh, this metal split ring goes on. This rubber piece goes on and the felt goes on. Felt goes on first because it's going to be on the back side of the, uh, the axle. There's no real good way to put these on. Um, I have cut slits in them before and installed them that way. It uh, don't, don't rotate. <laughs> it kind of works, but uh, it does leak. So I just put it on like that and worry about it later. Um, the metal ring is going to be the next part that goes on. Uh, let me struggle with this part. And then uh, your rubber wiper will be the last part to go on. There. Now we're ready for the knuckle. <laughs> Make sure you got your, uh, your top part ready to go. Um, I do not, because I didn't sand that yet. I'll sand this and then we'll, we'll pick up. All right, so step the first, get all your felts and wipers on. Second step, put your bearing into the top there, just like that, put your hands up. I've already got my shim on the uh, on the knuckle, so we're gonna want to slip the bottom part in and just like that. Balance it there. Support it with your hand. Grab your knuckle or your uh, steering arm and drop it on. So just like that, nice and easy. These are the guys that I machined. Um, I didn't want to spend 10 bucks a piece uh, at the Steelership buying those, so I just uh, bought one, copied it, and made my own, and they work. It's the correct angle and everything, so I'm happy with them. <laughs> That's all that matters. Well, that and if they actually work. But, uh, yeah, so we'll get those down, tighten them down. And you're going to want to be careful that this doesn't rotate either if you're on uh, two jack stands like I am because it will fall off. And, uh, my socket's not fitting on all the way because I uh, <laughs> beat the crap out of this uh, steering arm. I'm trying to get the cone washers out before. Definitely looser than you. Oh, it's because I didn't take up the bottom. <laughs> Tighten up the bottom first. <laughs> and of course, I snugged it down, so now the, uh, the cone washers are really uh, doing their job, doing exactly what they are designed to do. Um, yeah. All right, I'm gonna uh, get this thing addressed. All right, false alarm. I don't know why it was uh, binding up, but it's, uh, it's all good. Shims are the same side to side. So 
So I loosened off the top, hit it with a hammer, freed up those comb washers, and then uh, tightened the bottom up first. So, where's my face? There's my face. <laughs> I'm just snugging these up, I'll torque them down properly once I'm done. Now if we want we can go ahead and install our tie rod end. That'll make uh, this stop happening. So, whoop. that's about how I like them. Not too tight, not too loose. Uh, I just do it by feel, I'm not too super worried about it. So I'll put our tie rod end on and uh, then we'll set the toe in, toe out and then uh, lock it down and then we'll be ready to, uh, I don't know, paint it I guess. <laughs> guys that'll do it for today so thanks for watching and until next time take care